because they have to uh, <coughs> have to survive him. Um, I'll just briefly mention that uh, some windmills had, oh, like I said, some, a lot of them had a spring, but some of these older windmills, especially the wooden wheeled windmills, in the days when people manufacturers liked to build things ornately, so a lot of them would have governor weights on them, and they got quite uh, uh, creative and fanciful with these governor weights, and they were governor weights that looked like battleships and roosters and horses and, and uh, I don't know what all. And there are people who like to collect these windmill weights, and they, some of them go for a big price, some of them people have big collections of these windmill weights, and the people who collect entire windmills do not like the people who only collect the windmill weights. <laughs> if you're a windmill weight collector, you don't have to tell me. <laughs> Um, in addition to the governing system that we just discussed, there has to be some way to shut the windmill off. If it's pumping water, you don't want it to be overflowing your uh, cattle tank or whatever and making a big muddy mess. So there's always some way to shut them off from the ground, a crank you turn or a lever you pull down that uh, has some kind of system to uh, bring the tail and the wheel together and, and apply either a uh, band that clamps on the hub or a shoe that presses against it somehow. Different manufacturers use different systems for this. And you, you see a lot of old, old uh, you know, windmills made in the 1920s and 30s. If you're driving around, and the tail is over to the par uh, parallel to the wheel, but the wheel wheel is turning and that's just because something is worn in that adjustment system and that's something I frequently do is go out and tinker with that system and put shims in it or adjust it somehow to make the, the brake hold. And, uh, unfortunately, uh, I keep, i always sad when people call me up and say, well, uh, I was squeaking and the brake didn't hold, so I wanted to save it. So I went up and I changed the wheel to the tower. And uh, now, now uh, the wheel's all torn up and can you fix it? And I'm all well, you can do that. <laughs> because uh, that's, uh, the wheel, the wind is still exerting force on that thing. And if you chain it to the tower, it's going. <laughs> It does a lot of damage, so it's uh, something I try to discourage people from doing. It's, it's never changed. Um, so what does a windmill do? Uh, first of all, we're talking about mechanical windmills here. Uh, there's lots of people at the fair here who sell wind generators. And if your question to me is, how do I take a water pumping windmill and make it into a wind generator, my answer is you don't. Yeah, I know there's people who are all excited about trying to do that, and that's not what I do. I just, I like what a water pumping windmill does, and that's what I work with. There is a workshop here tomorrow at noon called Homebrew Wind Generators. And if that's something you're interested in, I would I encourage you to go to that workshop. That's not what I do. So what uh, these water pumping windmills do is they're producing a mechanical power. And the water pumpers somehow they turn the horizontal thrust of the wind into rotary motion with the wheel. And then usually by means of gears, <coughs> a set of gears and Pittman arms or a crank, it's turning that rotary motion into up and down reciprocal motion. And that up and down reciprocal motion is has to go from the windmill wheel at the top of the tower down to your well. And the well, typically a drilled well, and typically you have to have a cylinder that's the actual pumping mechanism down in the water in that well. So there's a pipe that's going down to the cylinder inside the well casing. And inside
inside that pipe there's a rod that goes to a plunger in the cylinder. And if you got a copy of my handout on the back of the page that says low tech windmill service at the part, there's a sort of a diagram of a well and a cylinder that shows you uh, how that works. Uh, inside that cylinder there's a plunger that's going up and down and it's got leathers, cup leathers that are like the ring, the piston rings inside your car engine. They're sealing against the wall of that cylinder. <laughs> and on the, then there are two check valves in that cylinder, one in the plunger and one in the bottom. On the upstroke, that, cell, that plunger is coming up and the weight of the water is holding that check valve open. So that plunger is bringing up all the water in the top of the cylinder. And then that's creating low pressure zone below, which sucks water in through the bottom check valve to fill the bottom part of the cylinder. Then on the downstroke of the plunger, the upper check valve opens to let the water in the bottom of the half of the cylinder into the top half of the cylinder. And but the water the check valve at the bottom stays shut to keep the water from going out to the bottom. So on the upstroke, water comes into the bottom of the cylinder. On the downstroke, it goes into the top of the cylinder, and then it keeps bringing it up on every stroke until it comes out at the top, runs out into your sister or your stock tank. And if that was too complicated for you to follow and you want to see how it works, come to my booth, which is booth X83, and I've made a little uh, pump that sits in my windmill, it's got a clear cylinder in it, so you can see the check valves and the plunger at work. And if the wind's blowing, you can see it. Anyway, this, uh, all this, the cylinder and this rod have to be somehow connected to the, to the uh, working mechanism at the top of the windmill, and there's typically a wooden rod or something that goes up and down in the middle of the tower there. And uh, you can, I've seen people use metal, but uh, the disadvantage of the wooden rod is it breaks for wealth reasons. The advantage of the wooden rod is that it breaks for wealth reasons. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a pain in the butt to replace that wooden rod, but it's a bigger pain in the butt when the teeth shear off the gears up in the window. So it's like a shear tip. It's a safety mechanism. Um, 